the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, No one has gone up to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that he who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. In this first reading, uh, Moses makes the serpent, he puts it on a pole. So he's making a graven image, which is forbidden by the Jewish law, normally speaking. But he's making this graven image and puts it on the pole. And obviously what's going on here is the people sin against God. They offend God. And so the effects of that is they are bitten by the snake, by the serpent. This should take us back to another place in the Bible where there's a serpent, Genesis, where Adam and Eve get bitten by the snake. They succumb and they fall. And so now they die. And the people die in this case here too with Moses. They're dying. Moses intercedes for him, and now they got this serpent on the wood of the stick. And by simply looking at this instrument of death, the snake, they are healed. They're healed. By looking at the instrument of death, the instrument of torment, Jesus also says here in this gospel reading, just as Moses lifted up the serpent, he lifted it up so that people could see it and be healed. It was raised up so that people could see. So must the Son of Man be lifted up. When was he lifted up? When he was lifted up on the cross. And Jesus Christ became sin for us. Jesus took upon himself the punishment of us all. And when we raise up Jesus on the crucifix, we look upon the very instrument of death. The Romans use it as an instrument of tormenting, reminding us of we're nothing. Something the devil would want us to be afraid of. Pain and suffering and death. And we want to run away from that suffering still today. But it's through raising up God on the cross that we are forgiven of our sins. And now, not only is the instrument of death a symbol of using God's grace. It's the first, sacri- first sign of a sacrament in the Old Testament. He used a graven image to bring grace to people. He used a physical object to bring grace to people. That's why we have the crucifix with the body, because the, without the blood of, of Jesus Christ, it means nothing. Now we are forgiven. And in fact, it is because of the suffering of Jesus Christ that we are forgiven. It is only through the power of Jesus Christ, his suffering, it is through a suffering that grace comes. And now we conquer evil 
what used to be the banner, what used to be the banner of the devil, the cross, suffering, evil, now becomes the banner of victory. Because Jesus Christ has won for us salvation. He has given us hope and healing. Because when those people in the back in the desert, when they looked upon that serpent, they were healed. And when we look upon Jesus Christ crucified, when we contemplate him, we are healed. He fills in the holes in the heart that, we, that, that are void. When we need our healing, whether it's physical healing, spiritual healing, or emotional healing, God is there for us. When we receive the sacraments, when we receive Jesus Christ here from this altar, it is through the power of the cross that that becomes real in our lives. It is through the power of the cross that, that mercy is given to us in the confessional. It is through the power of the cross that anointing of the sick works for us. It is through the power of the cross that matrimony becomes a sign of God's love for us. Where is God's love manifest? On the cross. It is through the power of the cross that any of the sacraments or any of the sacramentals bring us. It is through the power of the cross that we have each other that we can witness the mercy of God to everybody, to those who are poor, to the person simply sitting in the pew next to us. Where we can give kind words because we've been strengthened by God. And now we become a certain sacramental to others. And it is through this church, St. Joseph's Church, where we receive God's grace through each other and through the things around us, through, yes, this building, but through this community. God has blessed us so much. He has saved us from eternal damnation. He took upon himself the punishment of us all. And so we want to return that gift to him. We can't give him back comparatively to what he gave us. He gave us everything. But we give back our meager gifts back to him. And so I want you to invite you to think also about how you can give back, how you can give back to your church community, the people you see in the pew. Because it's not the priest that benefits from your generosity. It's the community. It's the people you see here in the pew. And hopefully what it is, we become a sacramental to those who've never seen a pew. Those out there who don't even know Jesus Christ and his mercy and his love. And so we want to think about how can we give within reason. Within reason. I think about how you know, if, if, if we never paid our lights, the gas, the, all the bills here, there would be no Eucharist here. There would be no confession offered. There would be no priest to call for anointing. There would be no other person in the pew supporting you. There would be no means by which we can serve others through St. Vincent de Paul, helping out with FACC, volunteering over at Provena. There would be no blue nuns with bless us with, our, with their presence. There would be none of that if there were no St. Joseph, because we need all three churches here in town. All three churches contribute to Aquin High School, and if one of them fell, there wouldn't be an Aquin probably. We need these churches. We need this community. We need each other. And so I encourage you to give out of your generosity of your heart. And so I would like to uh, invite Lorraine Ruby um, to come up here and speak a, moment, a couple moments on how passing on our faith is living as a faithful steward here at St. Joseph's Church or St. Mary's Church and participating and the important ministries and organizations within our parish so that we can be a witness to the triumph of the cross. Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you to bless your daughter Lorraine, give her bountiful graces, send her your Holy Spirit. May her words be your words. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit.
Amen. Good morning. My name is Lorraine Ruby, and I'd like to take a few minutes to share some things about the many life-transforming things that have happened to me since I've been part of this church community. First of all, as a newcomer to Freeport in July of 2009, I didn't know exactly where I belonged as far as church membership. Besides, although I had been a Christian for most of my adult life, I had converted to the Catholic way of practicing my Christian faith fairly recently, in 1997, when I was 54 years young. Can you imagine starting to learn everything that makes Catholics different from other Christians from scratch? There were so many things I didn't know and I needed to learn and I wanted to learn quickly. For instance, I didn't know the rosary. I didn't know much about devotion to Mother Mary, about the help of angels and saints, about the amazing transformations that were available to me through the sacraments of the Eucharist and reconciliation. And I didn't know most of the prayers by heart because for me, there had been zero attendance at RE classes during my entire life. Yes, I, I did learn basics by going to RCIA classes in Chicago at Holy Name so I could receive the Sacrament of Confirmation at Easter in 1997. But there were so many of us, uh, probably 75 or more, and it was hard to give each person individual attention to show us how to practice our faith. And I didn't know then what I know now, that being a Catholic is not just about knowing stuff in your head. It's about practicing what you know, not as rules you check off your list, but as a living, as living a whole new lifestyle. So really, I had to, so much to learn, like a baby, I didn't even know that I didn't know stuff. Since I didn't know anyone, me and my husband, Zach, who is a cradle Catholic from a town in Europe near Medjugorje, we decided to go to Mass to all three Catholic churches here. Although there were good reasons to, and good things about each one, we found ourselves drawn to St. Joseph's during the Advent season of 2010. It was one of those Masses that I saw Father Barr pick up the baby Jesus from the manger and cradle him in his arms and bring him down close to us for us to, to see. And a light switched on in my mind, and I felt such joy in my heart. Yes, although my eyes saw what, what was a statue, I perceived this is really baby Jesus with us just like he is really with us, really, in the Eucharist. And I knew then, at that moment, I had come home. Like someone who had traveled far, like someone who had thought themselves as wise, I had come to a place where Jesus really lives. And although Jesus is alive in every Catholic church, at every Mass throughout the entire world, he is really here, present for me, especially in this particular church, with the, these particular brothers and sisters with whom I share his life, the bread of life, the bread of heaven. Since then, I have felt a great urgency to learn everything fast and catch up to be able to participate fully in everything that a Catholic can do to be with Jesus, Mother Mary, all the body of Christ, here and in the hereafter. I, th I think I really shocked one of our sisters when I approached her and asked her to teach me how to do the rosary. She told me to come before Mass and learn by praying it with others. Soon I volunteered to lead it before the 10.30 Mass here, and I've been doing so at every opportunity. Um, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, a secret. At age 71, I've just recently fully memorized the Apostles' Creed. Some things like a new language are more difficult to learn as a senior adult. 
In the same way, I dove into everything here to thoroughly immerse myself in the fullness of the Catholic experience. Going to Light of the World weekend retreats twice, once in March in 2013, again in 2014, helped a lot. Also, the One Day God Is program is a wonderful way of reviewing and reviving the essentials of our faith. I did everything possible. I went to Bible study. I went to catechism classes. I even attended our CIA classes after Sunday Mass last year and again even now. I want to learn how to, oh, I wanted to learn how to be a lector and learned but made some mistakes and how to be a sacristan so I could learn the names and the placement of everything and the details of the Mass. To me, attending Mass is like going to the first step of heaven and being able to hear, see, and feel what's waiting for us eventually just a few steps ahead. And I thank God for all of these wonderful blessings that come from being a Catholic Christian. I believe it is the original church that Jesus founded and left on earth and the one that he is the head that is coming, and I am confident of that fact. And although I thank God for bringing me here, sometimes kicking and screaming, right? It is really you all who I owe a huge heart of grateful thanks for being my brothers and sisters in Christ who come here to worship with me, who participate in ministries with me, who call me and send me cards and remind me in so many ways that you care about me, who once was a stranger in your midst and now a friend, or at least, I hope, a friendly face. Thank you. That's what I came here to say. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Whatever you do to keep this church going and growing is not only for yourselves, but it's for people like me who need a home where we can enjoy together. Thank you. Thank you, Father Barr, for being everything I need to continue to grow. God bless every one of you. Peace be with you from a grateful sister in the Lord. And, uh, thank you, Lorraine, for your time today and for bearing witness to our parish community on how we have, part how we have participated in our important ministries and witnessed how we as a parish are bringing Christ to lives of others like Lorraine.